In this week's Tablet Tip Tuesday, I'm going to continue my series on level of detail calculations. This week I'm going to show you how to compare one dimension, one member of a dimension, to all of the others within that same dimension using level of detail calculations. This is another example that I found while browsing some of the Tableau blogs, but I thought a video would help explain how this works. So let's start by connecting to some data. In this case, I'm just going to connect to Superstore Sales. The first thing I want to do is I want to build a chart that is simply profit by product subcategory. So I'm going to drag product subcategory to the rows and profit to the columns. And you see I get a nice little bar chart. Nothing particularly interesting. Maybe I'll sort it to see which ones are my most profitable. Now one of the things that I might want to do is I might want to say how do some of my products compare to one of the products in the list. So for example, how does appliances, how does the profit of appliances compare to the profit of every other product subcategory? So to do that, we need to do a few, take a few steps. The first thing is I'm going to create a parameter and I'm going to call it select a subcategory. And I'm going to make this a string, make it a list, and I'm going to go ahead and add it from the field product subcategory. From that point, I can just hit OK. And now you see I've got my product subcategory, my select a subcategory parameter in the bottom left. I'm going to right click on, on that and show it. And you can see I just simply have my list of product subcategories. OK, great. Now, right now, this isn't doing anything because we haven't told Tableau what to do with the parameter. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a level of detail calculation to determine the profit for the subcategory that's chosen from the list. So to do that, I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call it profit of chosen subcategory, something like that. And the level of detail calculation in this case is going to be an exclude level of detail calculation. And I'm using an exclude because I need to remove uh, a level of detail from the particular visualization that I'm showing. In other words, I want to go to a higher level of detail. So I want to exclude the uh, product subcategory. And then from there, I'm going to do a simple if, if statement. I'm going to say sum, because I always have to have an aggregation inside of my level of detail calculation. And then I'm going to do if my product subcategory is equal to the chosen product subcategory. Oh, sorry, selected. then I want to get the profit end. Okay, and now what this is going to do is it's going to return the, um, the, the profit for the selected subcategory for all product subcategories in the view. And then I just simply need to close off my bracket, and there we go. You see calculation is valid, so that's good. So let's go ahead and throw product chosen uh, into the, the columns, and you can see I get the same value for every uh, product subcategory. That value is um, 97,158. And if I go down to appliances, you'll see that's the value for appliances. So if I change it to binders, you'll see here on binders, my products, my, um, you now see that my, uh, my, my level of detail expression, level of detail expression is returning the profit for the chosen subcategory, which in this case is binders and accessories. Okay, great. So now we have the product subcategory the way we want. So I'm going to, I'm sorry, the level of detail expression the way we want. So I'm going to remove that from the view. And perhaps what I want to look at is the difference between the profit of each subcategory and the profit of the selected subcategory. So if, to do that, I'm going to create another calculated field. And I'm just going to call this the difference in profit. And this is simply going to be the sum of profit minus the sum of the profit of chosen subcategory. Hit OK. And now if I drag the difference in profit to the view, you'll see that I can, uh, because prop binders is my second highest, only two of them have a positive. So you'll see when I, when I hover over binders and binder accessories, it's zero because I'm comparing it to itself. Office machines is slightly higher. Telecommunications is even higher. So let me maybe pick something in the middle like appliances. Oops. And you can see now I'm about halfway, right? Or maybe computer peripherals. You can see that how these all compare. So maybe I'll take that then and move it to the color shelf. 
And then I'm going to, because I don't want to leave my red green palette, I'm going to switch to maybe a red black palette. So red being negative, black being positive, force the center to zero. And there we go. So now you can quickly see how you can compare one product subcategory to all of the others using a level of detail expression. Now this could easily be, be um, expanded to allow the user to, partic to pick a metric as well. So let's create a new parameter and let's say choose a metric. And in this case I'm going to make it a really simple list. I'm just going to make it a string list and let's just do sales and profit just for simplicity. Hit OK. And now when I show this parameter you can see I could pick either sales or profit. Maybe I'll make it a single value list. And now what I need to do is I need to tell Tableau uh, what value to return based on the metric that's chosen. So again, I'm going to create a calculated field. And I'm going to call it value of metric. And in this, in this case, I'm going to say if, uh, let's see, if the chosen metric is equal to sales, then sales, else profit. Okay, and that's going to give me the value of the metric. So let's put this up here in the view. I switch it to profit, and we should see an identical chart. I switch it to sales, and now I see something different. Okay, so let's go ahead and take profit out of the view. But what I want to do is I want to change this level of detail calculation now to be the comparison of that chosen metric. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's go back into our level of detail expression. And instead of, so let's just call this uh, value of chosen metric. And we're going to exclude that, and we're going to say, um, instead of profit here, we're going to say value of metric. And hit OK. And then in our difference in profit, we want to say something like, uh, we want to say uh, difference in, let's change this to say difference in metric. And we're going to do the sum of the value of the metric minus the sum of the value of the metric chosen. Okay, and now what we can do is we can sort this in descending order by the value of the metric. Hit OK. And now you can see when I pick computer peripherals um, and I pick sales, where's computer peripherals here? Computer peripherals. You can see that the value of the metric is 79,985. Uh, uh, actually, this should, I need, I, maybe I should put my difference here instead. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And you can see now that I can see the difference. Or, uh, again, I could maybe switch sales. Put, oh, I'm sorry, not sales. Let's put the uh, value of metric here. And you can see it's working the same way. And if I put my value of my chosen metric up here as well, you can see I'm, only, I'm always getting back, in this case, the value of computer peripherals, which is right here. I switch it to, let's say, office machines, because that's the highest in sales. And you can see that now everything is red because everything is less than the value of office machines. Take that back out. And I can easily switch it to profit. And I see and I see something very different. So let's go ahead and maybe pick rubber bands, for example. So this is a great way that you can combine um, uh, lots of different parameters. You could easily extend this to allow the user to pick uh, maybe what, what uh, subcategories they want to choose and things like that. But hopefully this, this uh, example helps you show, helps show you how you can use a level of detail expression to compare one member of a dimension to all of the other members of that same dimension. So that's it for this week, and hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll be back next week with another tip.